Hi, I'm Cody, and today we're going to build an open delta bank. Here we go. So what is an open delta bank? Seems like a pretty good question, right? Well, an open delta bank is just a slang term that we use when we're talking about a two-pop bank. So in a previous video, which I'll leave a link to right here, we went through the, all the steps of installing a single phase transformer and supplying single phase voltage. Well, with an open delta bank or a two pop bank, we're gonna be supplying three phase voltage. And to better understand that, we're gonna to wanna to get into vectoring. And I know vectoring is kind of an ugly word. Trust me, this is about a five minute conversation. It's easier than heck and it explains everything. Let's get after it. So what are vectors? So vectors are just lines that represent something. And in this case, they're going to represent voltage and angles. And with vectors, we can use them to represent what we're doing in terms of connections in a circuit. So believe it or not, the easiest way to learn about vectors and how to vector is just to jump in and do it. A lot of this becomes really self-explanatory after a really short while. So looking at our circuit voltage, our nameplate information, and our customer needs, the first thing we need to determine is our primary hookup, either Y or Delta, and our secondary hookup, Y or Delta. So if you want a better explanation of how to determine primary hookup and secondary hookup, I'm going to put a link in the video right here going back to a previous video I had that explains it all. So looking at this transformer, this transformer needs 2400 volts running through the primary coil in order to give us 12240 output. So this hookup, 2400 volts on this circuit, is going to be a Y hookup. My secondary hookup is going to be determined by my customer's voltage needs, not the nameplate. Customer voltage needs always determine the secondary hookup. So the way that we determine that is by the old rule delta divide. So delta divides, 240 is divided evenly by 120, therefore it is a delta. So the next step is to come over here to our transformers and we're going to label them straight across one, two, three, four on my primary side and my secondary side. So we're going to start with our primary vector. And so I'm going to take this primary coil right here, which has a one on one side and a two on the other. And I'm going to put it where 2400 volts lives on this circuit, which is phase to neutral. And I'm going to feed it with a phase. So there's my primary line, my vector. One is going to A, two is going to go to neutral. I'm going to do the same exact thing for my 3-4 transformer. So this is my 2400 volt coil, 3 and 4 transformer. I'm going to take it, check this out. Three's on this side, four's on this side, right? I'm going to take it and I'm going to put it right here between B and neutral. Three going to B, four going to neutral. So the next step is to hook it up. So if we look at our primary vector, our two and four tie together and go to our circuit neutral. So let's do that. Two and four tie together, go to our circuit neutral. One goes to A, three goes to B. So one goes to A, three goes to B. Next, we have to vector out our secondary. And the two phase angles that we have to deal with are the same two phase angles that we generated on our primary side. So as soon as we hooked my one, two transformer up on, off of my A phase, and my 3-4 transformer up off a of B phase, I created two separate phase angles on my secondary side. So my secondary phase angle now is matching my primary on both my 1-2 transformer and my 3-4 transformer. Notice my primary and my secondary match. So one is on top, one is on top. 4 is on top, and what I mean by that is here's my level line. 4 is on top of 3, right? If this was level, 
four is on top, four is on top here. So the next step is to try to build a delta shape or a triangle shape out of these two angles. Here's how we're gonna do that. First, I'm gonna start off with my one, two transformer. So one and two. So I picked that line up, one's on top, two's on bottom, and I stuck it right there. Next, I'm gonna grab my three, four transformer, four is on top, three is on bottom, and I have two different options on how I can build a triangle shape. I can put it four to one, or I can put it three to two. So for this example, I'm gonna do a three to two. So four is on top, three is connected to two down here. That's a connection point. So what I've got going on here is my two of my one, two transformer and my three of my three, four transformer tie together. So in coming over, two and three tie together. There's my tie between my transformers. So in building this triangle shape, let's explore some of the voltages that we have now. Each one of these transformers, my one and two, and my four and three, each have a midpoint bushing, right? So one and two, there's a middle bushing. Three and four, there's a middle bushing. So on each one of these transformers, I've got 120 capability and 240 capability on each one of them. So when building a delta, it's very, very important to realize that you can only have one neutral off of one transformer. My distance between this phase and neutral is 120 inches, right? Between this phase and neutral is also 120 inches. And between this phase and this middle bushing, that's also 120 inches, isn't it? This distance right here if I were to close that, I would have a difference of potential of 120 inches. This is why you can only have one neutral on a delta. If you tie this other middle bushing to this other existing neutral bushing, you'll have a difference of potential or a fault of 120 volts. So when looking at all of our voltages, let's say I make my one, two transformer carry my neutral. I would have a difference of potential from phase to neutral of 120 volts, phase to neutral of 120 volts, phase to phase, 240 volts, phase to phase, this distance, even though there's not a transformer supporting it, is still 240 volts or inches, and phase to phase, 240 inches, right? So when we look at our customer needs, what they're wanting, they're wanting 120, 240, three phase four wire meaning three phase 240 so one two three phases 240 inches apart also 120 phase to neutral 120 phase to neutral 240 phase to phase so in this service we could supply both a single phase house service 120 240 and three phase 240 so let's take a look at what we got going on here. So my three and two are tied together. So looking over here, my three and two are tied together. My one and two transformer is gonna carry my neutral. So my one, two transformer, I'm gonna take the middle bushing, right? So here's my middle bushing. Middle bushing, I'm gonna bring that down, that is my neutral. My one bushing, my one bushing is a phase. My two bushing, where my two, three tie is, that's also a phase. And then my four bushing ends up being the third 240 phase. One of the most important things to realize any time we introduce a neutral to a delta circuit is something that we're gonna create called a wild leg. So a wild leg is just an anomaly or an anomalous voltage that ends up occurring anytime we do this. And it has to do with the distance between this phase and where the neutral sitting on the transformer bank. So your wild leg or your 208 leg will always be the phase furthest from your neutral. So 
Here we've only got 120 inches difference from face to neutral. 120 inches difference face to neutral. This distance ends up being 208 inches face to neutral. So this voltage will not measure the same as these other two. Here's only 120 inches, 120 inches. From my four bushing to my neutral will end up being 208 inches. It's very, very important to always mark this voltage down with whatever color tape you guys decide on your guys' crew. Because if we end up throwing this phase to neutral voltage down what the customer is using as their home voltage phase to neutral, we're going to burn up everything they got and we can't do that. So vectoring is a really, really neat tool that we can use to teach people about why we hook up a delta the way that we hook it up. It shows us where the voltages come from in distance and angles. So the only thing left to do is to go outside and hook it up and heat her up. Let's go. All right, guys, so here we are. We've got our open bank up here, our two-pot bank going on. We've got our bushings all labeled, one, two, three, four, all the way across, primary and secondary. And if you guys remember, if you guys remember what we had going on, we had one going to A phase. We had two and four tied together going to circuit neutral and three going to B phase. So guys, we got our primary hooked up. We've got our one bushing going to A phase, We've got our three bushing going to B phase, and our two to four bushings are tied together going to circuit neutral. So now the only thing left to do is to hook up our secondary connection. So if you guys remember, we decided to do a two to three tie and our neutral is gonna come off of our one to two transformer. Let's hook it up. So now that we've built it, let's energize it and go through the steps of checking voltage or rotation. My neutral on my secondary side is made up. My secondary connection is all sound. We're ready to come hot. Come and closed. So the first step is I'm going to check all of my phase to neutral voltages, being sure to identify my wild leg. So I've got 122. What is this? Come here, you. 123. And this should be my wild leg. It's a little high, 224. But hey, it's a simulator, so whatever. Should be 208. Next, I'm going to confirm all my phase to phase voltages. So that's 247. That's a little high. 247, 248. That's a pretty high, 264, but hey, whatever. We're getting the point. <laughs> I got a little work to do on my conversion bank. So next, I'm gonna wanna check rotation. You can do this with a rotation meter. We've got clockwise rotation. So
So now that I have checked voltage, I've checked rotation, and I've marked it accordingly, now I can come de-energized on my bank. Just make up my secondary connections and send the voltage to the customer. Now that our secondaries are made up, we can energize the bank again, coming closed on my lighter first or my transformer that's carrying my neutral. And then my power pot or my teaser. The very last thing to do before we leave the job is just to verify voltage. The rule of thumb is every time you operate those cutouts to energize a transformer or a transformer bank, you're gonna wanna check voltage. That way you know the customer is getting whatever the customer needs. One twenty three, one twenty four, two twenty five, a little high, but one forty seven, two forty seven. Good voltage. So, guys, if you have any questions about any of the terms or, or any of the processes and vectoring, uh, any of that kind of stuff. You guys feel free to email me. You can leave them in the comments below, um, whatever. I know this, a lot of this stuff, I skipped over a lot of stuff, some of the process when I talked about being having a lighter and the neutral and the power pot and all that. I know that, but uh, it, just stick with me. It's gonna, it'll get, get it clear. We're gonna have some very specific videos out on exactly what all these terms mean, where they come from, why we use them, all that. So uh, anyway, love to hear from you guys. So we'll see you next time.